Welcome back to iFish News Fishing Podcast. Your host, Glenn, Citadel Island Fishing Field Team, COAF Field Team on YouTube. And here we're going to learn to fish by our trials and errors. And in particular, this one is the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing series. And in this case, we're going to be closing out part one. All righty. And part one is mainly dealing with casting. And then later on, it's going to go and shift over to part two, which talks about things other than fly casting. So in this round, this will be number 11 in the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing podcast series, where I review some fly fishing tips in preparation for the upcoming trout stocking season. Well, trout stocking season is almost upon us here. Uh, it has already happened across the border over there to Oklahoma, and yours truly has been there several times and had some good times fishing. But upcoming the next few weeks, we'll be stocking here in Texas, the local ponds and whatnot. And some things that you want to keep in mind for this round is in this week's it's fly fishing tips 41 through 45. Tip 41, what spooks trout? 42, the hard splashdown isn't bad. Make the first cast count. That's tip 33. Correction, tip 43. And then tip 44, time your cast. And then finally, to close out part one of the book, tip 45, give me a good drift. All right, so let's go on to the first one, tip 41 this round. What spooks trout? And I'll be just reading this for those that are listening on our podcast. I'm also going to be posting this on our YouTube channel so you can get the visual as well. Okay, what spooks trout? Like many anglers, I often found myself wondering what the fish were actually doing beneath the surface. Eventually, my curiosity got the better of me. I got some scuba gear, dove into the North Fork of the South Platte River in Colorado and hung out with the trout to watch and learn what was really going on as a couple of my buddies cast flies at the fish. This be the fish experience eventually evolved into a story for Field and Stream magazine called Going Deep in the Name of Trout Research. That's pretty cool. <laughs> okay, the most riveting lesson I took away upon resurfacing was that the fish were not startled by my presence among them. I could often get with an arm's reach of a feeding trout, and it wasn't bothered one bit by the big neon bubble-blowing mass in the water next to it. Interesting. But any real motion overhead, a bird's shadow, for example, triggered an immediate nervous instinct to scatter or head for deeper water. That also held true for false casts over the fish as I held onto a boulder on the river bottom. I watched the fish skitter away time and time again after my friends started false casting over the run. With every false cast, the wariness intensified, and in effect, diminishing the possibility of a hookup with each pass of the line made over the water. Think about that in the context of shadows you cast and the number of times you false cast. Try to keep your false cast to a minimum and direct them slightly outside of the line of fire, bringing only the cast that counts into the target zone. Okay, so it's good to know that the uh, false casting, keep it to a minimum. And when you are casting toward the particular target, in this case a trout, uh, it's suggesting bringing the cast in only into the target zone when it counts. So when you're trying to lay that fly right, right, right in the zone of that trout. Okay, let's go on the next one. Tip 42, the hard splashdown isn't so bad. Hmm, let's see what this one says. I learned a lesson from Terry Gunn of Lee's Ferry Anglers in Arizona one afternoon while we were fishing dry flies in Marble Canyon. It's often better to splash your flies down on the surface than it is to make many false casts and create fluttering shadows from your flies and line over the fish. Think about it. Boom. Pop. All of a sudden, the fly is there in the fish's feeding lane. Naturally, you do not want to make a lot of commotion, and it's a huge mistake to rip your flies out of the water in close proximity to the feeding trout. Mayflies typically don't take off with the force of a water rocket. Ideally, you want to elevate your imaginary bullseye target a foot or two above the surface, as if you're casting it to a hula hoop suspended inches over the water. You want your line, leader, and fly to reach the full extension and fall gracefully into that zone. If I'm going to err on the high side or the low side of the target, however, I'll inevitably err low. Interesting. All right, so that's two now. Uh, tip 41, tip 42. Now we're on tip 43. Make the first cast count. It sounds simple, but after a guide has seen a client throw wildly into a pot of surface feeding trout a few hundred times to no effect, it's worth repeating that you should make your first cast count as if it were your only and best shot 
because often times it is. It's always better to stop, assess, and make the cast you want. Yes, a combination of speed and accuracy is ideal, but if I'm forced to choose one over the other, I always choose accuracy. 99 times out of 100, speed does not, in fact, trump accuracy when you're fly fishing for trout. Okay, that was tip 43. Make that first cast count. Okay, let's go on to number 44. Time your cast. Okay, if you make a decent cast and the trout you were after ignores your fly, wait and watch. You'll find that trout eating dry flies are often in a natural rhythm. They feed, pause, they feed right, pause, they feed left, pause, pause more. Then they start over and roughly the same routine. Sync your casting clock with that routine. Use your eyes much as your arm and the effectiveness of your casting will improve incrementally. Okay. All right. Let's see. Number 45. Give me a good drift over a good cast any day. Any good guide will tell you the same thing. In trout fishing, the most important three seconds are those right before and during the time a fly, dry fly or nymph, enter the zone where a trout is eating. In other words, it doesn't matter how you get it there, but when that offering hits the water, it better look appetizing or you're out of luck. In trout fishing, that means the drift has to be perfect. I don't care if you make a 70-foot flawless cast with a perfect loop or if you hand toss the fly, fling it, zip it, chuck it, or deliver it by FedEx. Once that fly hits the water, it has to look natural, period. Give me a good drift or a perfect cast any day and you will catch more fish. Promise. All right. Give me a good drift over a perfect cast any day and you'll catch more fish. Interesting. I believe that's correct. I think I've, I've made that mistake uh, personally, where um, I had a great cast, but the uh, fish didn't like it. Drift, drift wasn't there. Uh, I, I think the, the bubbles were going faster, or my indicator was going faster than the bubble line, and therefore big time ig ignoring my uh, presentation. So, bummer on that. Okay, uh, well, part two is going to be presentation 61 tips to help you place and drift your flies so that trout want to eat them. So our next series will be part two. We'll be going into the 61 tips. This one we're closing out part one, which is mainly dealing with the cast. And in particular, let's see, tip 41, we spoke of what spooks trout, and that was the false casting. So you do want to cast and make that cast count. You want to make sure that, at least if you're going to do false cast, Make sure you keep it away from the target, in this case, the trout or the fish, and make that one cast count. Therefore, you don't have all those false casts and maybe shadows uh, spooking the fish. Tip 42, the hard splashdown isn't bad. So that was the example where maybe sometimes it's better just to, to let it hit hard and go from there to immediately pull off like a rocket. Uh, it was exhibiting an example of a, a, a mayfly doesn't take off like a rocket, so off the water. So sometimes take the uh, splash down. It may be hard. Maybe it isn't that bad, but you don't want to spook things. Uh, tip 43, make the first cast count. That was that example where they had the uh, guide had seen someone fish or cast 100 times over to a trout. And that first one was one that really mattered. Everything else just didn't work. Okay, and then tip 44, time your cast. So that was a case where you have a trout, they pause, they feed, they fish to the left, or they, they eat to the left, pause again, go to the right. Well, guess what? Time your cast. At least time it to where the trout is going to be where you're going to be casting. Uh, good advice. And then give me a good drift, tip 45. That's a good one also because, yes, that presentation matters and, yep, that definitely will make a difference when it comes to trout. So some good things coming from the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing. Do check out next round where we're going through the next series. And this will be part two of the Little Red Book of Fly Fishing series where we're talking specifically 61 tips to help you place and drift your flies so trout want to eat them. All right. All for now. Till next time. We'll catch y'all later. And good luck and good fishing.